that I will show you are often neglected by uh, the ontology developers. On our approach, we call it the Advocatus Diabology, the Diaboli methodology, so devil's advocate, so I will explain why. Okay. So ontologies are the core of semantic web technologies. They are logical descriptions of a, no, of a domain of interest. And formally, there are sets of constraints uh, on what a possible world can be. And uh, we distinguish between two kinds of constraints, uh, the positive constraints and the negative constraints, even if it, this is more a conceptual distinction rather than a formal distinction. Formally, they are not important dis distinction, but we can say that positive constraints are constructive. Uh, they say what is necessarily true. A typical example is every man is a person. So if we know that something is a man, we can deduce that this is a person. And the negative constraint is more destructive. It says uh, what is impossible. So for example, no man is a woman. So if ever you find something that is at the same time a man and a woman, then probably there is a, a contradiction or an error. So typically, we have observed that uh, positive constraints, uh, the ontology model think about them, but they often neglect uh, negative constraints. So possible reasons can be that they involve negation, which is more difficult to conceptualize, and also because the negative constraints can be very numerous. If you think about this jointness axiom, their number can grow uh, quadratically with the, um, as the square of the number of classes, for instance. But however, the negative constraints are important for full deduction, uh, for the full deduction potential of ontological uh, reasoning. They are necessary for causing inconsistencies, uh, and uh, those inconsistencies uh, are um, useful for detecting modeling errors, for instance, uh, for repairing mappings between ontologies or revising ontologies interactively. So the detection of inconsistencies are used in a number of work to improve ontologies, and the importance of those uh, constraints. Uh, the existing, in the existing approaches, there are the automated extraction of negative uh, constraints. Uh, they rely on heuristics on machine learning because they're automatic. Uh, so this means that this is not entirely reliable and therefore there is a need for a manual inspection to uh, check whether this is correct or not. And in a number of works, this has been restricted to uh, mostly disjointness axioms, which are the simplest form of negative constraints but there are many other kinds of negative constraints. There also has been some work on the interactive completion of ontologies, uh, just an example based on a formal concept analysis, for example, but this is rather expensive in human interaction, and also in this case, the system tends to patronize the, the user, the experts, by asking questions in uh, an order that is specified by the system, and so the, the expert has no much freedom in, uh, in, its in his exploration. So we propose here an alternative methodology, the Advocatus Diaboli methodology. So the principle is first to represent the negative constraints in a cognitively intuitive way. So the idea is that the, if you look at what is a missing negative constraint, you can see them as possible situations, so situations that are possible according to the ontology, but situations that look absurd to the domain expert. So imagine, for instance, that you can have something that is a man and a woman at the same time. This may be possible for the ontology, but obviously this is absurd for the domain expert. On the possible situations, we will represent them with positive class expressions from the, the description logics. And this will allow us to specify negative constraints while staying on the positive, which is an important uh, thing because it's more difficult to reason in the negative. The uh, second principle of our methodology is to provide more freedom to the domain expert. The domain expert will be free to explore the possible worlds, the platonic universe, looking for absurd or unexpected situations, and the interaction will be in the spirit of faceted search systems. So here, the human expert uh, is supposed to assume the role of the devil's advocate. Okay, so hence the name of the methodology which means that he should actively try to construct situations which are impossible according to his or her knowledge and still are possible according to the ontology. Okay, so to reuse a term that was used during the PhD symposium by the invited speaker, the domain expert should be nosy, you see, really try to, um, to find the bad things. 
Okay. So here's the, the principle. You start with an under-constraint ontology. So for example, the pizza ontology. Then the domain expert will perform a possible world exploration, navigating from one uh, situation to another until he finds an unexpected possible situation. So for instance, he finds that some pizza that has no topping. Okay? So he's not happy with such a possible situation. And so he will assert a negative constraint that is derived from this uh, possible situation. You simply have to negate the possible situation to turn <laughs> it into uh, an additional axiom. So here the axiom is every pizza has a topping. Okay? And this can be added to the ontology, and then you can start again exploring in order to find more unexpected situations. So an important aspect on the exploration here is that the possible situations are built incrementally through navigation. So the domain expert is not ex um, expected to write it down uh, from scratch. It will be guided in this navigation. And the second important thing is that all and only possible situations are reachable. So during this navigation, the domain expert will not be able to build a situation that is already impossible for the, for the ontology. And he will be able to reach all of those possible situations. So we need to define more formally what is the exploration space. Uh, we see that this, the exploration space will be made of uh, all class expressions. And we will restrict them uh, in a syntactic and in a semantic way. So first, I start with the syntactic restrictions. And we call uh, the restricted class expressions cognitively intuitive class expressions. So intuitively, we, you only allowed for existential structures and disjunctions of uh, existential structures. And negation will only be allowed at an elementary level. Okay? So first, you have the simple class expressions, uh, which are class names, uh, unqualified existential restrictions on individual and their negation. And negation will only be allowed at this level. So examples of such simple class expressions are a pizza, something that has no topping, or Italy. Then from this we define the cognitively intuitive class expressions as the simple class expressions closed by conjunction, disjunction, and existential restriction. So an example of such uh, cognitively intuitive class expression is the following. Uh, something that is a pizza, that has no topping, and that has a country which is either Italy or France. Okay? So the main restriction is that we don't have the general negation. Uh, we also apply some semantic restrictions. We don't want to uh, let the domain expert reach arbitrary, uh, cognitively intuitive uh, class expressions. So we'll ask that we will require that the accessible uh, class expression be satisfiable uh, because we're interested in exploring the possible words and fully balanced so that there are no dead branches in disjunction. Because you could imagine a disjunction in, uh, <coughs> in the class expression where only one branch of the disjunction is uh, satisfiable. Okay, so this is the usual notion of satisfiability for class expressions. And for disjunction, the principle is that you can remove any uh, disjunction branch and you still have a satisfiable class expression. Okay? Okay, so that's for the definition of the exploration space. That is the set of class expressions that are interested um, in this task. But we also need to define a way for the domain expert to navigate through this exploration space. So we define what is navigation place. So that is... Uh, where a domain expert can stand, if you, if you want. And then we'll define uh, later the navigation links to move from one navigation place to another. So here, a navigation place will be a pointed, cognitively intuitive class expression. So this is simply a class expression like we just defined, but with one occurrence of the symbol X at the place of an unnegated class. So for instance, you could have this, a pizza that has some topping X. So here X is called the focus, and you can understand it as the insertion point, insertion point for new sub-expressions. So as you will be building uh, larger and larger class expressions, you need to, s to define at which point you want to insert something. Mm -hmm. And also this allows to express substitutions. So suppose you have a pointed class expression C uh, parameterized by X, by some uh, focus. 
you can apply it to D. So this is defined as a substitution. This means that you will replace the X, the insertion point, by some uh, other class expression. Okay, and semantically, if you want to check the satisfiability of a pointed class expression, just assume that X is equivalent to the top uh, concept. So we can see X as well as a kind of uh, syntactic variable, not a logical variable. Uh, at every navigation place, uh, the domain expert will be uh, suggested or given a set of adjuncts. The adjuncts are simple class expressions that are su suggested for substitution uh, to X, to substitute X. So there will be the possible adjuncts. There are the simple class expressions such that if you substitute X by D, you still have a satisfiable class expression. And the necessary adjuncts are in the case where the negation of D makes the class unsatisfiable. Okay? So if D, if a simple, if D is a possible adjunct, uh, it means that both D and not D are possible. And if it's necessary, then uh, only D is possible and the, the negation of D is not possible. I will show you a more concrete example uh, later. Then we need to define navigation links uh, to let the domain expert move from one navigation place to another, and so from one situation to another. So navigation links are defined as transformations of pointed class expression. And there are four kinds of transformations. So suppose we start from this uh, pointed class expression. So a pizza with a topping that is cheese, and the insertion point is on the topping, or on the cheese, if you prefer. You can either delete the sub-expression at the focus, so you remove the, the cheese uh, information. You can insert a disjunction, so here you replace conjunction by disjunction. So you, here we are ready to insert an alternative topping compared to cheese. We can also extend the expression by inserting a possible adjunct D uh, at the position of the focus. So here, for instance, we could uh, say uh, that the topping cheese has some spiciness level, and now the focus is on the spiciness. And you can also move the focus from one sub-expression to another. So here, for instance, you can move the focus to the back to the pizza, instead of on the topping. Okay. And an important theoretical result, which I won't detail uh, here, is that in short, the navigation space is equal or equivalent to the exploration space, which means by, that by following the navigation links, you can reach <laughs> all the, the situations in the exploration space and only them. Okay, so this navigation is a good characterization of the exploration space. Now we developed a prototype uh, to uh, experiment with this uh, methodology, which is called the Possible World Explorer, or PEW. Uh, its purpose is, the, is for the exploration of the possible worlds of an ontology, so to explore what is possible for a given ontology, and also to assert negative axioms to eradicate possible worlds so, uh, hence another explanation for the name Pew Pew, uh, like in Star Wars with laser beams. Uh, maybe uh, it's an interjection to uh, reproduce the sound of laser beams. Uh, it's based on two components, uh, the All API, and in particular the Hermit uh, All Reasoner for all reasoning, um, so for checking the satisfiability of class expressions, for instance, and on C release, which is um, a faceted search based. Uh, user interface for exploring uh, RDF data, and which has been reused here for the user interaction. Uh, there are three available syntaxes to accommodate uh, preferences of the uh, domain experts. The concise DL syntax, the Manchester syntax, and also the native c uh, syntax. It's available, there is a web page. You can download an executable and try it on your uh, ontology. Here is a screenshot of this uh, software. Uh, so here you have the box with the class expression. So here you see a pizza that has no topping. And here in the entry box, uh, the entry field represents the focus. So the where you can insert something. You have a box for the known instances. This is useful if you also have individuals in your ontology. And on the right you have the set of uh, adjuncts you have both possible adjuncts and necessary adjuncts. So you can see here that country is a possible adjunct because both country and not country 
are possible. And uh, as a base is a necessary adjunct because uh, there is not the negated uh, version of this simple class expression. So this means that from the ontology, we know that every pizza that has no topping has a base because it has been defined somewhere that every pizza has a base. Okay? And here you have the button to exclude the possible situation. So once you have reached a possible situation that you're not happy with, you just push this button and this will insert a new uh, axiom, a negative constraint to the ontology, which will be used in the following. Uh, okay. So here is a scenario, a navigation scenario using Manchester syntax. So you start with the empty, uh, the empty class expression. You just have the focus. And then you can extend this class expression by inserting a possible uh, adjunct. So here you say that this is a pizza. Then you say that it has no topping because it's something that is possible. Then this pizza has a country. Then you specify one possible country. You introduce a disjunction. <coughs> then you pick another possible uh, country. And then you can move the focus back to some part and remove it. So at the end, we have uh, the description of a situation where we have a pizza that has country, Italy, or France. So there's nothing bad with this. But we applied it on the exploration of the famous uh, pizza ontology. And we found quite a number of absurd situations, in fact. So in this well-known ontology, even it's, it exists for some time, there are still uh, a lot of missing uh, uh, negative constraints. So first, if you go through class exploration, uh, which will generate uh, disjunctness axioms, uh, you find, for instance, that it's possible for a country to be a food. So we can have something that is a country on food at the same time. So we uh, say pew pew, and then uh, this is uh, removed. Then you go further and you find a country that has a country of origin. Uh, pew pew, uh, should not be there. You have a food that is a country of origin of something. Uh, we eliminate it. Uh, a pizza that is an ingredient of something. So maybe this is more, uh, we may discuss this. I think that a pizza should not be an ingredient of something else. We have the pizza that has no topping. They should be removed uh, as well. Going further with rural exploration, we will find missing domain and range axioms. So for instance, I found that a country of origin is not necessarily a country. OK, so pew pew. Uh, you can have something that has a spiciness, but as it is not some food. So uh, can we say that a country has some spiciness or somebody has some spiciness? Mm, it's dubious. So we can choose to uh, suppress it. And it's un so those examples were relatively simple uh, missing axioms, but you can also find more complicated missing uh, axioms or negative constraints. For instance, I wanted to look at the vegetarian pizza because I expected uh, that it should not be possible for a vegetar vegetarian pizza to have some meat uh, or fish. But I managed to build this class expression, which describes a situation where you have a vegetarian pizza that has an ingredient that is meat or fish. So obviously, there's something bad. Okay? So if you know this ontology, you may be surprised, because a vegetarian pizza is precisely defined as a pizza that has no meat or fish. But if you look at the detail, a vegetarian pizza is defined as not having a meat or fish topping. But this does not exclude that it has a meat or fish ingredient, because uh, ingredient is a super property of uh, topping. So for instance, you can put uh, meat or fish in the pizza base. And then that will be a vegetarian pizza. <laughs> this is annoying, I think. <laughs> OK? So this is a, a, nice way, a nice way as well to, uh, to debug uh, some uh, axioms. OK, so just a few words about the complexity of the, this uh, tool. So first, it's a rather naive implementation. Optimization was left for future work. But still, it's useful to, to count the number of uh, all API calls that are performed to the reasoning engine. Because obviously, this is where it will be costly. So at the initialization, the hierarchy of simple class expressions has to be computed, which amount, in fact, to compute the class hierarchy and the property hierarchy. So this is generally uh, done anyway. And for each navigation step, and for each candidate positive adjunct, uh, you need to perform at least one call to be satisfiable for possibility, uh, for uh, checking uh, possibility. 
and you need an additional 2D course in case there are D disjunctions in your, uh, in your class expression. So it gets more complex the more you have disjunctions, the, the more complex it is. But it's still linear in the number of disjunctions. And you need one call to be satisfiable for checking uh, necessity of the adjunct. Okay? So if we need to optimize something, it's really on this part that we have to do it. So as a conclusion, uh, if you combine uh, this uh, software Pew on the diverse advocate attitude, this can give you a playful methodology to find and eradicate many absurd situations, QQ. This helps to complete an old ontology with negative constraints that will improve its deduction capability. But I want to emphasize the fact that Pew is also useful to discover, explore, learn an ontology while staying at the positive side on the, at the instance level. So instead of reading the axioms, you can simply play uh, uh, building uh, some situations, just looking for what is possible and what is not possible. So you will build class expressions that represent situations involving individuals and their relationships. So you can think in terms of uh, individuals and the, their relationships. And knowing that only satisfiable situations will be reachable through navigation. So for future work, they obviously we, should, we have not yet much tested on the big ontologies, so obviously we should look at this, doing some scalability <laughs> studies and optimizations, because uh, near real-time reasoning is re necessary for seamless navigation, so that's a constraint, because there is some interaction, this need to be uh, efficient. Uh, we should do some usability studies. So the interaction paradigm has already been validated uh, in Sewilis uh, through user studies, but not this use to the enrichment of ontologies. Uh, we can think about functionalities beyond negative constraints. So, for instance, it's already possible to define a class from a possible situation. So, if you build a situation with a pizza that has uh, some meat or some fish uh, as ingredient, you could define this situation as a non vegetarian pizza, for instance. And also, it would be interesting to see how it's possible to navigate to more complex class expressions. But it's more difficult because this involves general negation, universal quantifiers, number restrictions, and then it may be difficult or even impossible to stay on the positive side on, at the instance level. Okay. Here it is, thank you. You can uh, visit this URL if you want to know more uh, about this tool. Thank you.